old body style F-150. This works just as well for the newer ones. I've done it to plenty of them at work. You notice I've got the front end up on a pretty tall set of jack stands for a little two-wheel drive, and you'll see why later on. We need some clearance under the A-arms. But as you can see, it needs ball joints. Turn your wheel over here. I don't know if it shows, watch the top ball joint. It's shot. Break this loose. 21 millimeter, 13 sixteenths, and then strike it right here, as hard as you can repeatedly. Take a decent sized flathead. Wedge it in here. You'll find a spot where it'll catch the back of the brake pad. I can't get it without the light in the way. And you'll be able to pry over like so. And take the pressure off the pads. Push the pistons back. Take your 18 millimeter bolts out and drop the caliper. Take the 8 millimeter bolt out. Wiggle the ABS sensor out. Start the 8mm back in the hole so you don't lose it. Disengage a clip here with a flathead screwdriver. And then tuck your ABS sensor up over the frame to keep it out of your way. Remove this cotter pin from the nut. That cotter pin and its nut. The top nut was a 13 16 or 21 millimeter. Bottom was 15 16 or 24 millimeter. You notice I've completely removed the bottom nut. The top nut I've left on a turn or two. And once it's beaten loose, hold up on it as you take this nut off. I missed the shot the first time, sorry. Which kept this from crashing to the ground, which it will do now if you're not careful. I'm gonna do the uppers first to get it out of the way. Take note of the angle of the upper control arm. It's important to tighten it back down at the same angle so that when the vehicle's at ride height, these brand new bushings on the new control arms you're going to put in aren't all twisted up. So, 21 millimeter or 13 sixteenths there and there, and then we'll repeat there. And that's all there is to it for the upper arm. I'm going to pull it out of the way, do the lower ball joint, then put the upper arm in once it's swapped out. The control arm is out. Remove the snap ring from the lower ball joint. Now if that control arm had had some bounce to it, all you're going to do is jack it up with a four jack and put another jack stand underneath it to brace it in place so it has absolutely no give. Uh, this suspension, it's pretty much locked in place solid, which is great. Uh, some of the newer trucks I've had to put a jack stand underneath it so that, again, when you're hitting, you're not just bouncing your control arm up and down, taking all the momentum out of your blow. To put the ball joints in, my high-tech tool is gonna be, this is a Proto, two and an eighth inch. I'll focus one, there we go. 12 point socket, which actually fits my ball joint perfectly without damaging the boot of the shaft.
going to get some good weight on it and drive the control arm down. Sometimes isn't necessary to actually hit downward, coming up from the side and imparting a good vibration is enough for the press, the jack to drive it in. But there we go, a fully seated ball joint. I should add that I have a ball joint press in this shop and I do them this way because it's 10 times faster. I'd still be setting up the press to zip that thing apart. And I'm already done. Do everything I just showed you in reverse order. Put it back together. You're done in about an hour aside if you take your time.